This conference will now be recorded. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, the nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next order of business will be uh, consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. 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 Okay, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye stands voted unanimously. The director's report. Uh, any questions, comments, gentlemen, with regard to some? No I, I think I'm all set, but let me just check my notes here. Tough on you, right? I'm here all I'm here all night. Well, that's good. I'm all set, thanks. Okay. I have two questions. One. Uh, any feel at this point, Rick, for when we're at to open up if you will for four regular business at this point? Um I've with I haven't heard back from the uh, health director. Okay. Um so I'm, I'm waiting for guidance from him. Which totally proper. That's I would note that tonight's special town council meeting is a virtual meeting. Okay. So they have to change their posture. I okay. okay. The only comment I would like to make is otherwise is re in regard to page 4-12. Uh, interesting to see both the Regional network service and local network service uh, come in significantly under budget. Yeah. I guess you'd have to call it sure down luck in terms of how things happen to work out. That the peak for the, you know, that our peak didn't add to the peak of the region as a whole. So, yeah, and it's probably totally thirty thousand dollars between the two that we don't have to pay, which is a right great period of time. Anecdotally, we've been noticing for some time that we appear to have gotten less. Pardon? We appear to have gotten less peak. And I wouldn't be able to even qualitatively, let alone quantitatively, tell you why. I don't know what's changed with it. Yeah. Just as I said, that, that, that's the first time I've seen anything anywhere near that magnitude. That's what I, that's what I bring it up as well. Okay, is there a motion to approve the director's report? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say in favor, saying aye. 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 Stands voted unanimously. Okay, aye. next order of business, we'll move on to item number five. That would be with regard to high consumption billing uh, with regard to uh, Francine Monaki. Uh, Brian or Neil, whichever one of you would like to take the lead with regard to that, please. Yep. Um, so on February 11th, 2019, uh, a neighbor reported to the Law and Water Division that uh, the property at 15 Green Street had water coming out of the um, out of the house. Uh, the Water Division responded and identified the cause of a frozen meter. Uh, water service was turned off at the curb stop. The frozen meter was removed, and the service remained off until a new meter could be installed uh, on April 22nd. Uh, at the date the meter was removed. Uh, 48,618 cubic feet of water had passed through the meter since the most recent read. Uh, two days later, on February 13th, the bill was generated for that period, totaling $3,913.90, of which $1,992.96 was water and $1,920.94 was sewer. Uh, since the day that uh, File bill was generated. The customer has incurred an additional $501.18 of normal water and sewer usage charges, uh, as well as $715.39 of water interest and $699.24 of sewer interest. 
also at forty five dollars. Forty dollars of minimum fees. Um, since that February thirteenth, twenty nineteen bill, the customer has paid a total of two hundred and thirty one dollars and eighty six cents. Since we could not uh, investigate this appeal immediately due to COVID nineteen, uh, the division waived one hundred twenty three dollars thirteen cents of water interest and one hundred nineteen dollars sewer. Uh, recently, on April twelfth, twenty twenty one, uh, the water division performed a dye test. Uh, the water sewer division performed a dye test. At the property determined that the sump pump located in the basement discharges to the ground and not into the sanitary sewer system. And as of May 10th, 2021, the customer's current balance is $5,426 and two sequels. Uh, the customer is seeking um, a credit for the entire amount of that February 13th, 2019 bill as the water was not used for any useful purpose and it did not pay for using the sewer. All right, uh, gentlemen, any comments? Uh, I, I, uh, I think the water was used, but the sewer wasn't. So to the extent that uh, we eliminate the, uh, the sewer chart, the sewer fees, the interest, the end of the, the uh, payment plan, I think it's fair as uh, not my chair. But if you're looking for a formal motion or more discussion, if you have any more. I'm sorry. I'm with Mr. Ron. Okay. okay. Just because I have hearing aids doesn't mean an allergy. <laughs> so, so they, they, they sometimes act more like your foot. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Anyway, all right. Uh, there is a proposed draft here that was that was yeah, it's a, yeah. as a standard. You know, we like to provide the the water sewer divisions like to provide the mm -hmm. people this commission with a recommendation here more than. We can accept it, provides it, change it, but rather than be a little hot footed, you know, as we say, we'd like to sewer was the water did not enter the sewer. So we the sewer charges as well as the sewer um, interest accrued since that time. However, the water did go through the meter. Um, so there are still water charges, water interest, and the liens associated with that. So we recommend a 12 month no interest payment program as long as the customer is in seven like, calendar days to set that up. All right, is there a motion? Uh, yes, Mr. I just one question, and we've probably heard gone over this with that before. Let's just say, hypothetically, we um, adopt the recommendation. Um, and then there's an obligation for them to contact you the within seven days. They're not here tonight. How, how exactly are they notified that the PUC has a, approved a recommendation and that they need to get their uh, bail? Either. So to, 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 <laughs> tomorrow morning is the motion. Get to Brian. So our so our business manager contacts them the most the morning after, and then we will follow up. Or Brian will follow up within you know. So one day, so Wednesday, then Friday. This is something that we try. You know, again, and we'd rather get. We want to have the customer on a payment program than eventually have the water turned off. You know, I think it's beneficial to both. But that's how we reach out. Got it. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to adopt the recommendation of management regarding resolving the dispute of February 15th, 2019. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay, gentlemen, is there any additional discussion with regard to Mr. Bernie's motion? Carrying on all those in favor of approving the draft recommendation uh, by staff, please signify by saying aye. 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 I stand voted unanimously. Okay. Continuing with uh, war, uh, we'll move on to item number six and budget amendment with regard to standby generators. Right. So item number six and item number seven are paired together. Um, so we are currently in the midst of construction of standby.
by generator at well number one, and then we are connecting um, well number three to the existing standby generator at well number two. And that work has been completed. Um, the work at well number one is ongoing. Um, right now, we are waiting for Eversource Natural Gas to install the gas lateral from the road into the well. That being said, uh, we have incurred some additional expenses. And so the two budget amendments we have in front of you are to take money from the fiscal year 1617 design capital account and move it to retained earnings and then move it and then move that $14,200 from retained earnings into the capital construction account for fiscal year 1718. Under government general acceptable accounting practices, you cannot move capital funds across fiscal years. So this is why we have two amendments in front of you. One is to move it from one fiscal year into retained earnings, and then move it from retained earnings into the top of the year, where we have the purchase order with the contract. We did not want to take construction funds out of our 1617 object line item, which specifically says design. So we'd rather have full transparency and be cautious. So that'll answer any questions. John, any questions with regard to sir? All right. And then, oh, I do have, sorry, Paul. And then uh, the assistant comptroller today uh, wanted us to tweak the language. So underneath the recommendations for Ms. Menachem, we do have just slightly revised um, budget amendment forms. They, Tim said as the assistant comptroller, simply wanted to call it retained earnings. We had Farming too. We thought it was a little cleaner, particularly for the town. All right. Then is there a motion to uh, with regard to item number six, or is it with regard to what is going to Wall and Springs in 1617 to the 10 units? Mr. Chair, the reason stated in um, Mr. Andrews, May 10th, 2021, we said that. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Gentlemen, any comments? Any questions? Hearing on all those in favor of Mr. Bernie's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Stands voted unanimously. And the companion to that is item number seven. Is there a motion to approve this? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve Is this replacing the page name? Oh, pardon? What is this here? Okay, that's 1617. This is the one we just voted on. Yeah. And then it would go into from retainer into the 1718. Mr. Chairman, the reason yep. stated in Mr. Amway's May 10th, 2021 memorandum, the reason stated on the record, I make the motion to approve the question amendment for our division standing by January 1st, 2021. Okay, is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Any comments, questions? Yeah, I just, just want to make sure uh, there's a replacement page here that clarifies this is going from retained, the 14200 is going from retained earnings into uh, fiscal year 1718 for Wells and Springs. And that's 433-00314. Yeah. Yeah, came out of it. It came out of that account. That was my for, question. For, for 1617, now it's going into being reallocated for 17 and 18 to the same count to the same sub account. Okay. All right. All those in favor of Mr. Bernie's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Stands for the unanimously. Okay. Next order of business would be item number eight WPCF WPC upgrade project. Neil, you're on. Does anyone, does anyone like a hand Neil, Neil, what are you handing out? Is this what you emailed yes. over? Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, 
So we will begin with the secondary settling tanks uh, excavation for the influence pipe gallery for second settle, secondary settling tanks number five and number six is proceeding. The stone below of the base slab is nearly complete and we should start to see rebar installation all goes to plan. Moving then to the secondary pump station, the membrane roofing has been placed. The leakage test for the pump wet well is in progress. So that takes several days to complete. Uh, the contractor poured the final finished floor fill in the pump room. And what you might say that is, is there's a rough finished floor, and then there's the final floor brings it up to the final. Once they finish working in that room, then they put basically the finished layer of concrete in there that brings it up to the proper elevation. Um, and then they are preparing to install the fine screens, which are located in the flow path prior to the pumping prior to pumping wastewater to the tertiary phosphorus building. And the primary aspect of those fine screens is to, uh, cap is to catch any algae. So algae then is the source you know, of phosphorus. So we can mechanically catch it or we have to treat it with the alum and the sand that is best. Uh, tertiary phosphorus building, uh, the masonry subcontractor is in the process of installing the brickwork along the west and north walls. Installation of the active flow equipment continues. Insta ins installation of the interior CMU for the north stairwell and for the mechanical room located in the southwest corner of the grade level um, is nearly complete in both situations. Uh, the contractor has completed installation of the six inch effluent trough drain piping, and they are currently installing the six inch sludge piping. And the motor control center units, the MCCs, have been placed on, on the grade level as well. Uh, UV disinfection post duration building. The mechanical subcontractor has begun installation of the interior ductwork. And the electricians continue in that, in both the UV and the PA area. There is a lot of electrical work there. So there's about two or three electricians every day in there. I'm moving over to the emergency generator building. The louvers have been installed on the west and the south walls. And then again, electrical work continues there as well. The personnel building. Electrical work continues. So I'm going to repeat, but our biggest subcontractor on site is the electrical So they will basically be there at the end of the project. And then site work, uh, the electrical transformer and the meter box have been installed on the dump sheet. And the installation of the duct bank, what we refer to as along the high road in front of the emergency generation building has been done. Flipping the page. Financials, there have been no uh, changes in the next change orders since last month. We spoke actually two months now in a row. Um, that should change by next month. We do have three separate change orders in to the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection for review and approval. And construction schedule as well uh, remains February 10, 2022 at this point. Answer any questions? Great. Perfect. Yeah. The only comment I'd make is one of those I have made something similar to before. Uh, here we are, less than 12, 12 months to completion. And to date, I realize this is there's a lag here. I've only seen change orders to the extent of quarter of one percent is commendable on the part of staff, on the part of AECOM, and on the part of Sears Nicholson for that matter. It's sort of a global thank you to everybody. All right, with that in mind then, um,
Um, you can open up the, you know, the public hearing didn't have a specific hour that it was to open, therefore I will call the public hearing for the proposed electric rates to be on. Okay, is there, are there any comments uh, that Rick, do you want to have uh, Mr. Mayhew make, uh, excuse me, Mr. Seeley make uh, with regard to this, or you or Tony, and then we, you know, as, as a lead in for this, and then I'll ask if there are any, any questions from the public. And I might add to the public if you have any questions, please, please, <coughs> if you're online, uh, go into the chat box and note that you have a question. Uh, you'll be called on accordingly. Uh, if you're a caller, um, you, your turn will be would be after those who are online. So you will be asked to have the opportunity to speak with you. So with that in mind, Rick, uh, well, sort of, Chairman, thank you. Um, Tony provided a bit of a transmittal memo and then a summary chart under page nine dash two, which shows the sort of the broad customer classes and the proposed change in costs to those for the typical customer in those classes. Um, and then the overall net effect, and it's a weighted net effect of all the um, of all the post changes. And those, those those changes are all year to year. It's not they don't all reference back to the current year. They, they compare themselves to the year previous to them. So using the overall as an example, overall rate overall cost which really means overall revenue if billing units stay exactly the same uh would go down 2.3 percent in the next fiscal year but the year after that would go down another 1.8 percent from that fiscal year then down two tenths of a percent from that fiscal year in 2024 and then up two percent from 2024 to 2025 and similar um no, we're not similar necessarily, but similar math for the for the other classes shown in the chart and um, So overall, I personally have been through a few of these in the time I've been here. I feel this is pretty benign and a um, you know an overall good plan uh, and adjustment. And, and the idea that there's four years worth of rates here, so that kind of great certainty for customers. That we're not going to be here annually. You know, we can when we publish these rates, they'll go in the book, and we'll be able to tell people what the rates will be, you know, plus or minus the PCA is for 2025. You don't want to do this every week, work involved with staff and such, but to have it, have it this pinned down this far out is good. Um, I, I the the magnitude or lack thereof of the changes out the years I think shows steady as it goes nature of, of the division right now and um, again it leads to late and therefore cost certain piece of customers. No, I mean that was really it. I had uh, I had asked Mayhew to put this together to kind of paint the picture. Last time we presented uh, the information wasn't displayed quite like this. We had a graphical representation that that showed it um, in the uh, summary report that uh, Mayhew had prepared. I believe it was page three of that um, report that kind of showed a bar chart year after year of what the rates do. And, um, you know, I I echo what. You know what Rick said that um, you know, I think it's not a, a significant impact, and it just you know how it aligns with uh, how business is, is going. So, okay. all right. Uh, in that case, what I will do then is I will ask the public if they have any uh, comments, questions. Um, most we welcome to uh, ask away, comment away. There are two callers. There's uh, Steve Gale, and there's also an unidentified caller number two. Um, if you do have questions, please uh, unmute yourselves or uh, ask in the chat bar.
Are there any questions? At the third time, uh, are there any questions of Steve or of call number two? If there, there, are we any, there we go. Any questions? Hello. 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 Who's speaking? Steve Gill. Steve Gill. How you doing, Steve? Good. I, I just have a I comment and a really question. Question. Sure. Um, I appreciate I the appreciate fact, the fact that, the that the WD has been giving us rebate for the past year and a half, two years, and the fact that you've kept the rate increases to a minimum for the third and fourth year of the rate study. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. That's it. Thank you very much. That's it. That's the only okay. If there is nothing else, then I will declare the public hearing closed and we'll move on to item number 10, which is discussion and adoption of the proposed electric rates. Um, do things in a couple minutes here. I can go ahead and ask for a motion to go ahead and approve the rates as presented herein. Uh, if that is amenable, if you would, Mr. Gordon, please. Um, please, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, for the reasons stated um, in the memorandum of the dated May 11, 2021, as well as the reasons stated on the record um, along with agenda item number 9.2 and 9.1 to make a motion to approve the rates as presented. Is there a second to Mr. Bernie's motion? Second. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, any discussion on the motion? I, I, uh, I support the, uh, the rate structure, the, the structure as it's been presented uh, appears to maintain revenues sufficient to cover expenses and provide uh, equitable distribution of cost of service across uh, all the rate um, classes. So I would support it uh, as presented. Uh, just to add on to that, uh, we've, we've had two workshops along with a, a public hearing tonight through each of the workshops um, our consultant has provided us with comprehensive information to assist us in formulating the current rates uh, the second workshop we distilled the um the, the, it's complex information it's a sort of easy read and easy to understand um buckets he's gone ahead and, and done that even in a more efficient manner tonight in the names of uh, item number 9.2 and just echo Mr. Ryan who said that, uh, that I'm in support of the uh, uh, proposed things. Exactly. Comment I'd like to make. I, I've been through probably a half a dozen great studies over the 20 some odd years that I've been involved with the PUC. And I, had, I do want to commend Mr. Stevie. I, I think it's probably one of, the, as well as commending the staff, but I think this is probably one of the best, pre, about the best presentation I have seen with respect to the rate study. Uh, that goes back into the 80s, into the early 90s, and then since 2005. And so, Mr. Seavey, uh, I'm, I'm certainly familiar with PLM. I remember meeting Charlie, uh, Marzum back back in the 80s. So I, I've had the pleasure of dealing with the company off and on for 35 years, even though I've only been on the commission now for 22. So, but overall, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has been involved with this staff and you, Mr. CV, and your staff for the excellent job that has been done 
on this presentation and coming well up with the, the rates that are fair and equitable. Thank you, Nora. Uh, with that in mind, I will call, call for a vote. All those in favor of Mr. Bernie's motion to approve the electric rates for fiscal year fiscal years 22, 3, 4, and 5, please signify by saying aye. 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 Stands voted unanimously. All right. Uh, with that in mind, actually, the next order of business is public question and answer period, which I will open up at this point in time. Are there any questions from the public? Yes. Yes. Yes, Steve. It's Steve. Yes, Steve. Uh, go right ahead. Uh, good evening. Um, the, the power cost adjustments coming up. Is that going to remain negative or going forward? Is that going to be positive? Uh, Steve, I, as I sit here right now, I don't know. Um, we would compute that uh, the about a, roughly a month from now. The thing about what, what the date was, a bit more than a month from now. So, um, my gut hunch, and that's all it is, so I don't, I won't die on the hill about what I'm about to say. Because I don't think it's going to change very much. And my next question is: Now that the rate study is over, are you going to concentrate on redoing some of the residential rebate? formulas for different items. You mean for uh, energy conservation matters? Yeah, for, yeah, you know, for heat the, pumps yeah, and yeah. air conditioning uh, and. Yeah, that's a separate effort. I don't know. That, that, that is that is something that uh, I, I've spoken to Walter and the new energy uh, efficiency uh, specialist on. It's something that we are going to look into and see what, um, you know, compare ourselves to what the neighboring utilities are doing. Um, and and revise uh, those rebates if needed, or, or propose revisions if needed. So yes, that, thank that you. Will You're welcome. That's all. That's all, I got. that's all I got. Okay, Steve. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions uh, or comments from the public? Hearing none, uh, I will end the uh, public question and answer period. Uh, are there any, is there any correspondence or are there any committee reports of any sort to come before this body? No, sir. Okay. With that in mind, then I will uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned in 1904. Thank you, one and all. Mr. C.B. again, thank, thank, thank you very much. Say hi to Charlie. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. My, it's been my pleasure working with you. I, I just want to say, I think you had a, a unique opportunity here to, uh, in, in a period where you had declining costs, to uh, to do something really significant with your rates. So, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good night. You too.